this point, um, I will ask him to come forward, then we can turn to our neighbors and... I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, welcome to church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Um, it's just so nice to be able to celebrate the Lord again. As I was seated there, I was feeling the comfort of saying, yeah, the church has really, as, as an organization, the church has really come uh, far. You know, um, some of us started preaching when at the, at the, at the pulpit area, you would be seated on a bench. It's even squeaky, all right? Now, if, if, you are, if you are asleep, you might even sleep on the couches in front. And it's good to honor the Lord that way. Amen. Um, uh, it's, it's nice to, to be with you again. And uh, <laughs> though when visitors were being introduced, I lifted up my hands and somebody immediately corrected me and told me that you should never do that again. You're not a visitor here. And I said, yeah, Mara, I've been here so many times. Amen. So here I'm not a visitor. I'm just that brother who works somewhere else and then comes once in a while. Amen. All right. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Let's celebrate the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. Um, let us go to the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 24. Um, we're going to do a bit of reading. I, I thought I could skip some verses, but hey, it's, it's just too loaded. We have to do uh, some reading. Okay, Genesis, chapter 32, verse 24. If you are there, say amen. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Verse 25. When the man saw that he could not overpower him. Please take note. The man saw that he could not overpower him. Turn to a neighbor and say, neighbor. He could not overpower him. He touched the socket of Jacob's hip. Now, the, 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 the dynamics there are already strange. This is the same person who cannot overpower you. And yet he now has the ability of just touching the socket of your, uh, of, of your leg and, and immediately it gets out of joint. All right? He touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Verse 26. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Somebody say, unless you bless me. Verse 27, the man said, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. The man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Somebody say, has overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. Verse 30, so Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Verse 31, the sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and, oh, come on, somebody, I love the last part, and he was limping because of his hip. Amen. He was limping because of his hip. Verse 32, therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Let's look at a sermon entitled, Limping But Blessed. Amen. Limping but Let's close our eyes as we pray. Master, we've read the scripture. Now just blow us with the truth. In just time we pray now and forevermore. Amen. Limping but blessed. Thank you, neighbor. Say, neighbor. I might be limping, but I'm blessed. Limping but blessed. Uh, what is interesting about the story of Jacob is uh, it's real. Amen. Now, I'm saying that deliberately because when we come to church, we have the tendency of not being real. Amen. 
The story of Jacob is real. It's, it's a real story. There's jealousy, there's anger, there's tempers, there's disobedience, there's lies. It's real life, like the life we go through throughout the week. Amen. And one preacher said he loves the New Old Testament because of that, because it gives us real life as opposed to the New Testament, which gives us theologies and theories. Amen. So Jacob is there, and, uh, and the saga is a story which involves Jacob, his brother Esau, the mother Rebekah. By the way, the Bible says she was very beautiful. Amen, sisters? And you look good. Amen. Ah, say, say you look good. Amen. amen. Now, I know some of you are not told that you look good. Amen. You look good, so at least I'm saying it on, uh, on the brother's behalf. Amen. All right. Um, yes, and, and, and so it involves Rebecca, the beautiful woman. It involves Jacob, and it involves Esau. It involves Rebecca. It involves Isaac, the son of Abraham, the friend of God. Amen. So the story obviously has got so many uh, anecdotes here and there, but let's pick it up from this point. And I know a lot of you have read this passage. You have heard someone's preached on it, but Let's pick it up from a different perspective and bring out different angles that are not common to the passage. Amen. Thank you, Rebbe and Abel. Pay attention because we'll be looking at different angles. The story starts, there's Jacob. Jacob is loved by the mother, Rebekah. Esau is loved by the father, Isaac. Are you following? Esau loves to go out. He's someone who's active. He's out there. And Jacob is a mama's boy. He's always at home. He, he, he's the guy who knows how to cook recipes uh, from mama's recipe book. Are you following me? And so because he's a mama's boy, he knows how to cook. And he knows how to cook delicious food. And so this particular day, um, the, the Esau, who is the firstborn and the person who was entitled to the blessing of the firstborn. Are you following me? So he's entitled to the blessing of the firstborn and the blessing of the firstborn for this particular family was a blessing that was going to carry the plan of redemption. So it was not just a cheap blessing, it was a critical blessing. Are we together so far? And so Esau is carrying this blessing, but he doesn't take it seriously. And on this particular day, he comes home and he finds Jacob has cooked. And it's delicious pottage. And, and he's busy stirring it. And uh, have, have, you ever, have you ever waited for a meal being cooked by someone who has just eaten? They take their time. <laughs> when you are really hungry there's no time it's ga, 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 done are you following me so now Jacob is having the time of his life to having this meal and then Esau arrives and says please I'm hungry give me some food Jacob responds and says I'll give you some of this food but give me your birthright Wait a minute. It's just a plate of food. And someone is talking death rights. It's like they're, they're, you're talking about a totally different agenda. Yeah, I mean, it's just a plate of... No, give me your death right. I want to move to you, my friends, that right at this beginning, we understand and we realize that both of them were hungry. One was hungry for food. The other was hungry for the blessing. Are you following me? And as we come to church, we've all got hunger, but what, the, the issue that is separating all of us is what hunger have you brought? Some are hungry for the word of the Lord. Others are hungry for money and they don't care how they get it as long as they've got it. What kind of hunger are you bringing today? Ah, tend to neighbor, say neighbor. We're all hungry here. Yeah, the, so what kind of hunger are you bringing here? Listen, listen, don't be that person who brings the hunger of validation. Be the one who brings the hunger of progress. 
Oh, let me tell you something. One of the reasons why developing countries remain the way they are, yes, we were given a bad deal by the by, by our colonizers. Yes, they, they took our minerals and they did that. But the problem is with our hunger. When they are hungry, Bona, they build great highways and great buildings. And they make sure that every citizen is covered. When we are hungry, we eat alone as the politicians. And then when you are now too full, you even find the side chick. And the, the people who continue to... Some of you go to places, the last time the road was fixed was before you were born. Because of the hunger of the politician you voted for. Uh, so my friends, as we get close to elections this time in South Africa, I'm suggesting to all of you who are going to vote. I know some of you, just by the look of their face, I can tell you, you're not voting. But those who will vote, those who will vote, please choose someone whose hunger will be able to satisfy your hunger. Amen. Thank you, Reba. said, Reba, check your hunger. And I want to move to you, my friends, that our hunger for success will determine the direction we take as individuals. Some of us get satisfied too quickly. Your appetite is too small. Are you following me? Let's not be like our uncles in the village who bewitch each other over bicycles. The level of satisfaction is so low that they'll bewitch you for visiting them with a 4 by 4 Hunger. Hunger. And let me tell you something. God wants to bless you so that you are able to satisfy your hunger, your family's hunger, and your nation's hunger. We need to look at hunger from a bigger perspective beyond ourselves. You are supposed to be successful, not just for yourself. Ah, how many of you remember Jabez? Oh, that you would bless me. And bless me how? Indeed. But what else did he say? Enlarge in my territory. Enlarge in my territory. Your territory is too small. Yes, by, by the grace of the Lord, you have those three cars, but your territory is still, still small. Are you following me? By the grace of the Lord, you have that nice house, and uh, at least when it's supper time, you can scream, and your child will come from upstairs, but still, you, your territory is too small. Are you following me? The Lord is looking for a church that is hungry. A church that is ready to move and turn this nation upside down for Jesus. How many of you will speak like David and say, as a deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs after thee. That is why he was able to kill a lion. That is why he was able to kill a bear. That is why he was able to kill Goliath. That is why he was able to kill the Philistines. David fought 66 wars and he won 66 wars. Why? Because of his hunger. Thank you, Rebbe. Say, neighbor. Check your hunger. Hey, and Lord have mercy when you get married and the other partner doesn't have a big appetite. Hey, your hunger for success is there. They're already satisfied at your introductory level. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, choose wisely. I don't know, I don't know, am I, am, I, am, I, am I doing things okay? Okay, okay, yes, 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 give me, yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, choose wisely. Uh, can I say something? It's not part of the sermon, but I need to bring this through. Sisters, if there are any single sisters here, don't apologize for your hunger. Girl, you studied for it. Girl, you worked hard for it. You spent sleepless nights, and then the brother wants to come now and just get it for free. No, 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 no. Levels, Baba, levels. Bring real hunger here. Otherwise, the family won't move forward. You can't have a marriage where the day you get married, that's the day you start going backwards. Then your neighbor say, neighbor, hunger. Okay, now, so, so there is Jacob, obviously, he, he asks for that, and then he's given, and um, um, he's, he's given the birthright, and then the saga goes on, this is interesting, he's got the birthright, but he hasn't got the blessing, amen, he's got the birthright, but he hasn't got the, but he's now entitled to the blessing, but there's a little problem, 
The problem is Isaac loves Esau. Amen. Thank you, Rebbe. Say, neighbor, something is coming. Every time I look at this story, I feel no, and, and when we're talking about it in our lesson studies, we say, Jacob, Jacob was wrong. Jacob did, ah, ah. I'll tell you, first problem was with Isaac, wrong leadership. Amen. Thank you, Rebbe. Say, neighbor, it starts with leadership. When I, when I was uh, being advised, uh, just, just uh, as I was about to get married, somebody said to me, when things start failing in your home, I'll start with you. Says, but don't be, be, before we talk about your wife and your kids and whatever, I'll start with you. Because you are the one who is leading. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank you, neighbor. Say, neighbor. Leadership. You cannot talk of leadership and make excuses. Isaac was leading the family, but guess what? As he's leading the family, he decides not to follow what God said. God said the younger shall rule over the older. The younger will get the birthright, but instead he decides to bless the older. Why? Because he, he, he loved him and he was his favorite. Are you following me? Wrong leadership. Listen, as you are leading your families, as you are leading your organizations, as you are leading anywhere, the first stop is what God says. When God gives an instruction, you obey and you implement. Amen. Thank you, Rebbe, say neighbor. Listen very carefully. So, Isaac, and we take it lightly. We take it lightly. What Isaac did was treason. He was literally, literally going against the plan of redemption. God had chosen Jacob. Isaac chose Esau. How many times have we chosen those whom God has not chosen for us? And we are even stubborn and strong about those whom God hasn't chosen for us. And so it goes on, my friends. Then uh, this day, Isaac can't see properly. I always have a feeling that the dude would have been helped just with a simple pair of spectacles. But, but anyway, it's, uh, technology had not yet arrived. <sighs> no, don't you have that feeling when you read the verse? You go like, I think you could see a bit. Okay, so... so, so um, it happens and uh, he says to Esau, now follow the saga. He says to Esau, go get me some nice meats and cook it the way I love it. In that house, best cook, Rebecca. Number two, Jacob. Esau was at number three. And guess what? Number one and number two were hearing that. Oh, be careful who hears what is being said to you. Some of them will steal your blessing while they're still trying to digest it. Yeah. And so, my friends, as, as Esau is now thinking, okay, which direction should I take? Meanwhile, this other side, Rebecca and Jacob are already chasing some goat outside. By the time he now leaves the house, the goat is already the late. Now they are the busy dealing with the cleanser now, removing parts. And they cook it the, the way that Isaac loves it. You can never outsmart a woman who loves her husband when she's cooking. You can never outsmart her. She will really cook. And she cooked it the way. No, she knew the exact, I think Isaac should have checked on the spices. Because the certain spices, you know, like these ones, they come from Madame. Went ahead. The guy is busy hunting. Oh, come on, somebody. Picture this. Come on, put on your sanctified man. You are busy hunting, yet the position you want has already been taken. Busy fasting, busy praying, busy asking the church to pray for you. They have already given the position to someone else. And so, he gets in, puts on the clothes of Esau. Something very strange. How do you get the blessing by deception? 
That's one part that we miss. A blessing is a spiritual entity. When it has come, it has come. It doesn't matter how you got it. Ah, somebody missed it. It's there in your Bible. It was purely by deception. He comes, he dis Jacob deceives his father. He even asks him, are you Esau? He says, yes, I am. Ah, somebody's missing it. It doesn't matter what name I come with as long as I've got that which God wants to put on me. Are you following me? Are you Esau? He says, yes. Then he, he eats the food, it's delicious, and then he blesses him with the dew of heaven and, and says all these nice words and it's so powerful blessing. You know, that blessing which comes when you're full. Have, have you ever been full and felt like blessing someone? <laughs> you just feel like, hey, man, yeah, I'm blessed here. When, when my wife cooks nice, because she's from, a, from, from the Lamini clan, I like to say, hey, Lamini, are you following me? So when I really enjoy the food, I'll, I'll finish and I'll go, hey, Lamini. Now imagine after hey, Lamini, it's now time to bless. Hey, the blessings were coming out, non-stop, flying. At the moment, Jacob walks out. Esau walks in. And he says, please bless me. Isaac says, dude, it's done. It's done now. Change your neighbor and say, neighbor. Listen very carefully. Change your neighbor and say, neighbor. Please listen very carefully. My little question, Elder Munitz, is this. Why didn't Isaac reverse the blessing? Why didn't he reverse it all? Why didn't he add a curse on top of the blessing? You have deceived me, so you are cursed. You are this, you are that, you are that. Take your neighbor and say, neighbor, listen. So this is how it worked out. The moment a blessing is released, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord are without repentance. When it has gone, it's gone. Oh, and furthermore, when you are blessed, you cannot be cursed. So there was nothing Isaac could do. The blessing is already released. I can't curse him. I can't reverse it. Too late. That's why, listen to how he speaks. He says, I have blessed him and have made him Lord over you. And indeed, he shall be blessed. Ah, come on, somebody. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you really need is the blessing. I know some of you are looking for money, but what you really need is the blessing. Read your Bible properly. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. It says the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Are you following me? You are blessed without side effects. Sister, sister, you don't have to sleep with your boss. Get the blessing, not from this blesser with a mukaba. Get a blessing from the real blesser who's up there in glory. Is he trying to get a blessing from someone who is so thick he can't even breathe properly? <sighs> and then that's the one who wants to bless. Who's the offer, man? Leave him alone. Go to the real blesser. Amen. Amen. Ah, turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. get the blessing. So now Esau says, oh, okay, Jacob, you have done this. And he says, please give me something. The father says, okay, I'll give you something. Be careful that you don't settle for leftovers. Whenever, when the real deal has been taken. I read something interesting about, um, about, about Abraham and, and Isaac. He said, Abraham gave, because you know, the, how many of you realize that Abraham actually had some, after uh, Sarah died, it's like he was just waiting for her to die. Then he had another woman, Keturah. Like, yeah. And he had a number of children with her. All right, and, 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 and this is what the Bible says. It says, and Abraham gave gifts to the children of Keturah, but he gave everything to Isaac. Have you been, imagine, you think you are, you are bowling, yet you are just in the gift category. Others have received uh, everything. Then to your neighbor, say, neighbor, Make sure that you get everything 
that God wants for you. Don't settle for leftovers. Esau says, oh, Jacob, okay, you have done this. I'll see you. And which you have done this, ne? We'll see. How many of you remember when you were young at school and then somebody said, uh, after school is after school? I mean, the, the statement is innocent. But the connotation, after school is after school. And he said to Jacob, after Isaac's death is after Isaac's death. Minanawe, you will say, I, I went outside. I even, in the process of running, I exercised. It's okay. Remain with your nice pottage, busy getting birth rights here. It's okay. I'll sort you out. And guess what happens? So that saga goes on, beloved. And, and Jacob now has to run away. Ah, come on, somebody. As he runs away, and he gets to a certain point. And he sleeps for the night. He takes a rock. And he puts it as his pillow. Oh, come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, listen very carefully. It was not an ordinary rock. It was a rock that had been used when Abraham was making an altar at Bethel. So that rock was a rock that had worked on an altar as the Lord was communing with Abraham. Are you following me? So as he sleeps on this rock, the dreams change. Oh, listen to me very carefully. It depends on where you sleep. Certain places have been sanctified. Certain places are doorways to heaven. And other places are shortcuts to hell. Abraham, many years earlier, had created a portal. Oh, thank you, neighbor. Say, neighbor, listen very carefully. Parents, if there's one thing you can leave for your children, it's an altar. Leave a place, there should be a place in your house where serious prayer takes place, where even the witches know that when you're dealing with this house, there's a room we cannot approach. Because they are the person tabernacles with God. Are you following me? Yes, the house is nice, but leave an altar there. So that your children, many years down the line, can still connect to their gods. And Jacob slept there and he saw angels ascending and descending. Amen. Please follow the order. It didn't say descending and ascending. It said ascending and descending, meaning this is where they were starting from. When you have a place where you spend so much time with God, it becomes a habitation for angels and they start from here going up. Ah, uh, Ali told you. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, create an altar. All right, so, so we move on and uh, he's at Bethel. He gets to the place uh, where there's Laban's house. He gets to the, to the uncle's place. You know, there's something about life. You might think you're, you're a crook. They are real crooks. You might think you're a heartbreaker. There are real heartbreakers out there. Jacob thought he was a leader. He just managed to outsmart his father. There were generals, Laban, shrewd businessmen. Gets there, his Jacob, his, the, his salary was changed ten times. The people are hectic out there. That is why I love the expression "hamba juva." <laughs> hamba, go, go. I need to think you are smart. Go. They will deal with you, Pambili. And when you come back, you'll be ready to be fried. <laughs> Instead of flying, you'll be talking of frying. And so my good friends, so the saga is that he meets this person and I'm, and I'm trying to tell you, my friends, if you rush for blessings before they come, somebody's going to make you wait. And I want to speak to the young people right now. Don't rush for things uh, before God gives them to you. Because you will not be ready. You won't have the capacity to handle the blessing. Amen. Let me help parents now. Those little girls of yours who are busy moving up and down and trying to say. The moment you, the, the, the person they're saying hi to, the pants are here. Don't greet my daughter, man. Your pants are here. 
Hey, and your, and your daughter, you can even see she's charmed the way you were charmed when you were a teenager. All right? And, and you're looking and you can, God have mercy. Young people, don't rush for things. If you rush, you will crash. Wait for your time. And so just um, uh, Jacob gets there and he's hit left, right, and center. He's gone so many times. Uh, but take your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is faithful. He already had the blessing. He was blessed, but broke. Blessed, but being conned. Blessed by but being left upon. Uh, some of you right now are already operating at blessing level, but right now at your workplace, you're right at the bottom. Blessed, but at the bottom. Don't rush for it. When God decides to reveal it, he shall reveal it. Thank you, neighbor. Say, neighbor, when your time comes, no one will stop you. And so, so there is final when it's time to be blessed. Jacob became rich. I've, I've said this so many times here. Jacob became rich by putting sticks in front of sheep. Those who have done economics, those who have done business studies, tell me, how do you teach this in a lesson? You're trying to teach young people how to be dynamic and great in entrepreneurship, and this is how you do it. Put sticks in front of sheep. What am I trying to make you understand, my friends? Don't expect God to bless you the way you have always been blessed. God has got a way of blessing you beyond your imaginations. Are you following me? God has got a way of blessing you beyond your expectations. From, well, yeah, on a day where you least expect to be blessed, the Lord will move and do something great and mighty in your life. Amen. Ah, So he's blessed. He's now wealthy. And he finally says, I need to go. Okay, let's go, Jacob. And he's, uh, he's now traveling. And he's having a good time with his family. And they're going back to the promised land. Then, the news comes. Esau is coming. Remember, after school is after school. So, you're, have you ever felt good? and felt blessed just when you're about to relax a problem pops up and some of these problems are, are so multifaceted that when you look at it and you say if i solve this one the rest of the issues won't be solved and it pops up like that but thank you and say neighbor listen to this one this time around jacob had learned he had learned what David finally caught up many years later. I will lift my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from there. He knew that ah, this time around, I don't need to cook people. I don't need to try and be funny. This time around, I will go to God. Amen. And he goes to God. He tells the rest of the family, you can go. I, I love the Bible. He says, Jacob says, when I left, I left with a stick. But when I came back, I came back. I like the NIV. It says, I came back as two companies. It has a corporate feel, you have Not as two companies, LTD. Now, you have He came back as two companies. He was unapologetically rich. Amen. And I just hope that there's no one who thinks there's piety in poverty. Read your Bible properly. Poverty is on the side of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16, going downwards, where the curses are. That's where poverty is. Are you following me? Hey, I'm a Sabbath. Are you following me? Hey, thank you, Rebbe, say neighbor. There's no piety in poverty. Abraham, a friend of God. Rich in gold and silver. Job, the richest man in the east, also the holiest man in the east. Are you following me? And maybe in the east, the poorest man was the most evil. But anyway, let's leave it there. We don't know the details. But the bottom line is as Jacob is now out there, he, he, he's praying to God. And right in the middle of the praying, somebody touches him and he gets into a wrestling match. And they start fighting. And the wrestling goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And then the Bible says, the man noticed that he cannot overpower Jacob. 
Ah, uh, come on, somebody. He cannot overpower him, so he touched his socket. Can I preach it like I feel it? He touched his socket, and, and then, and after being touched, Jacob still says, I'm not letting you go. Look, you have touched my socket. Now I have less power, but let me tell you something. I'm not going anywhere. If it means you detaching me from, the, from my leg, you are going three quarters of my body, the leg will remain. I'm not going anywhere. Are you following me? Let's learn a few lessons. Number one, why didn't God overpower Jacob? God will never overpower you. He only wants your surrender. He has given you free will. He will never overpower your thoughts. He will never overpower your wishes. He will never overpower your small belief. He will never overpower your faithlessness. God wants you to surrender to him. And when you surrender to him, then his ways will come. Some of us, the problems we have are because uh, we, we, are, we are still wrestling with God on the wrong issues. Remember I spoke about the hunger. Your hunger will determine what you wrestle God over. Amen. Some people still overpower. You're wrestling God over a, a, a person who has got a deep voice. Just like, oh, that's what you... When you look at life, your, your summation of a good man is door. Oh, come on, let's move on. Listen, there are some things that will never come to you unless you wrestle for them. They won't drop on your lap. You'll have to wrestle for them. You'll have to have sleepless nights. Are you following me? You'll have to travel long distances. You'll have to be frustrated. You'll have to go high up the mountain, down into the valley. Keep on doing it. Wrestle for it until it finally becomes yours. And then Jacob makes a request. And he says, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Ah! But Jacob, that's right, you stole it, you are blessed. This other time, you delight your father, you are blessed. Why do you still want a blessing? Because Jacob's hunger was for the blessing. Some of us would have stopped at the birthright. Just after eating the, just after getting that birthright, you are covered. Are you following me? Jacob said, no, man. I want to move to you, my friends, that blessings come in levels. Some of you are already at level 7, but you haven't got to level 11. Some of you feel you have already reached high levels. You are at level 11. Ah, kuna are you 36. Are you following me? There are levels, so keep on pushing. That is why I love the song, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Lord, plant my feet on higher grounds. Ah, and so there he is. And the, his tendon is touched. And the Bible says... When he finally let go after being blessed, he had a name change. Amen. He's no longer Jacob. He's now called Israel. Amen. Oh, I hope somebody in here has had a name change. Amen. Somebody knew you as a player. Now you're known as a witnesser. Somebody knew you as a gossiper. Now you're known as a prayer warrior. Amen. Name change. Name change. And he gets his name changed and he wakes up. Can I end it this way? He wakes up and the Bible says, in the morning, he was limping. But he was blessed. Oh, come on, somebody. Throughout his life, when he was walking normally, he was not fully blessed. But now he's limping. And he's got the top dog blessing. You see, when you're limping and you're blessed, your pain reminds you of your blessing. Your pain and your blessing are intertwined. Are you following me? Limping but... Limping but blessed. Limping but blessed. I don't have a job, but I eat every day. Limping but blessed. I wrote the exam, failed it, wrote again, failed it, finally I have the degree. It doesn't say try it three times. Limpy. I've been sick for the past 20 years, but guess what? Those who are healthy are now in the grave. I'm still alive. Limpy. 
Yes, my marriage is not a strong one. Things are a bit shaky. But guess what? I am married. You are not. Limpy. Limping but blessed. Limping but blessed. Yes, you. I might have missed out on the promotion, but I still got a job. Limping but. I wrote the exam, and yes, it showed me flames. The mark I got is just slightly over my age. But guess what? At least I wrote. Limping. Limping but blessed. Is there anyone in here who is limping but blessed? You are driving a business. Your business is, is literally on oxygen. If it was in a hospital, it would be in intensive care. But guess what? It's still running. Limping but I might not be as educated as you are. But guess what? I'm alive. I'm eating just like you. Surviving just like you. Limping but Limping, but blessed. My car might not be as nice as yours. Actually, my car needs a prayer every time before I start it. But guess what? You arrived at church, I also arrived. Limping, but... Limping, but blessed. Is there someone in here who is saying, life is tough, I'm limping. But I'm blessed. It was painful when they disfellowshipped me because I had a child outside marriage. But guess what? The child has grown and the child is in church and the child is presented in church limping back. Yeah. You know, if I were you, I would make up my mind that I'm just going to continue limping because the blessing of the Lord is inside the limp. They can laugh if they want to. They can say what they want to say. But guess what? I am. But. So don't, don't despise me because of my limp. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I carry as a result of that limp. And even today. I know obviously people are now saying. But they are not the real Israelites or whatever. Wherever the name Israel is. They are still blessed. Why? Because someone was limping. I want to pray for someone right now. Someone who's saying, Hey, I've had it rough. I've had it tough. But I'm limping. And I'm still blessed. Yeah, have, have, have been involved in, have, have, you, have you ever been involved in sin so much that you start looking like your sin? But guess what? You are in church today. Limping but I want to pray for someone who's saying, I just need a prayer so that I can limp on and still remain blessed. If you're there, stand up and we're going to pray together. Because most of us in here can see from your face, you are limping but The story might have started with deception. The story might have started with confusion. But the story ends with blessings. A blessing that comes with a limp. Limping, but blessed. Limping, but blessed. Ah.